Hi, Diamond Painting friends. Jessica here with Tiny Worlds of Wonder. Today I'm stopping in to share seven things that I wish I had known when I started diamond painting. If you're a brand new diamond painter, this one is for you. Hopefully you'll be able to learn from my mistakes, and I have made many. <laughs> if you're an experienced diamond painter, welcome back. I would love to hear in the comments below. What are some things that you wish you had known when you first started diamond painting, especially if I missed them here in the video today? Because our collective wisdom on YouTube in the diamond painting community is strong. So be sure to pop those in the comments below. Otherwise, let's head right into this. The first thing I wish I had known when I started diamond painting was that size really does matter when it comes to diamond paintings. So. I have made a couple of examples that I'm gonna pop on the screen right here using Van Gogh's beautiful public domain image, Irises. This is a gorgeous image. I would love to do this as a diamond painting one day. I rendered this using my Winstitch cross stitch software in both a 20 by 25 right here and a little bit larger size, which you'll see in a second. Now, Winstitch is not the perfect um, program for rendering diamond paintings. However, I think you can see by looking at this image and this one, which I rendered at about a 62 by 77, I think, um, that definitely bigger is better. And I rendered this one with about 40 colors or so. So if you are in the market for diamond painting and you're considering what size to buy, I've made a video all about some guidelines that I use when I'm selecting sizes for my diamond paintings. I'll link that in the cards up above. Um, another great tool that I love to use is Threadbare Designer. Now they have some fantastic rendering software it's free, you can preview your image rendering for free. I love this one because you can actually see what size diamond painting you're rendering as you go. So they have an option for a diamond painting canvas size, which is really nice. So that's a tool that I will link in the description below. So I highly suggest that if you are going to order a diamond painting and you're just not sure what size to get, Air on the bigger side. Go big or go home, man. <laughs> and then if you're still not sure, pop a screenshot into that rendering software and just see how that's going to look when you get it all finished. The second thing that I wish I had known when I started diamond painting was the difference between round drills and square drills. Okay, now diamond painting drills these little diamonds that we stick to our self-adhesive canvases come in two shapes. They come in rounds and squares. I have an example of a square drill canvas in front of me here. And I wish I had known when I started that round drills and square drills give different effects when they're finished. So square drills tend to have more of a shine to them rather than a twinkle and they tend to render your images at a little bit higher resolution because typically you get more drills per inch on a square than you do on a round. Now some of my fellow YouTubers have made some really outstanding videos comparing round and square drills on the same image. I'm gonna link to a couple in the cards up there because um, they're really great videos and I don't think I need to reinvent the wheel. But I think you will find that if you were to render the same image in both round drills and square drills, that square drills would give you just a little bit more clarity. And like I said, you get more of a shine with square drills than a sparkle. I'm gonna switch now and show you a square drill canvas and I think you'll be able to see what I mean. So here's a close up example of a round drill canvas. You can see there's more canvas showing between the drills um, on my round drills, but I don't have the best light here for showing you the various kinds of sparkle on these. But especially if you look further afield from like way back, if you focus your eyes back here, when I lift this up, you'll definitely be able to tell that there's more of a twinkle to this canvas 
than a shine like the other one. So, unless you're working with very small round drills, and in my experience, Treasure Studios Art has smaller round drills than average, unless you're working with those small round drills, like I said, square drills typically give you a little higher resolution. The trade-off is that they're much slower to do. So if you want a quick project, if you know the canvas is going to be very large that you're working on, it might be just as much fun for you to order a round drill in that canvas so that it moves a little faster and you know you may not have um, those problems with resolution because you're already getting it in a really large size. The third thing I wish I had known when I first started diamond painting is the difference between opaque covers and clear covers. Now, typically diamond painting canvases are manufactured in one of two ways. They are printed on a canvas fabric um, with a plotter and then a double-sided adhesive is applied over the top and there is opaque release paper over the top of the adhesive. Those are double-sided adhesive canvases. Typically, if you have a canvas delivered to you and it has this opaque cover, you know right away that this is a double-sided adhesive canvas. Now, canvases can also be, they can also come with clear covers. So these clear covers are typically poured glue canvases, as in the canvas image is printed on the material with a plotter again, and then a machine or a person applies a layer of glue over the top that is either sprayed or wiped on, and then that clear cover is applied over the top. Now, again, Treasure Studios Art is sort of an exception. They use a mounting film, which has some of the qualities of each. They have a clear cover, but they're a little more reminiscent of that double-sided adhesive. Now, the difference between these two types of canvases really comes down to how durable the adhesive is. I remember when I started diamond painting, I absolutely hated the clear covers because they're so much less convenient to work with in squares, or so I thought. But I have to say that as time, as time has gone by, I really have learned to love these clear covers because the clear covers with the poured adhesive are so much more durable to weather conditions, to shipping, to wrinkling. The canvases hold up so much better without having issues with rivering, which I'll talk about in a minute, um, but it just makes the canvas so much more durable. So at this point, if I had to choose a favorite type of adhesive, I would definitely go with the poured glue adhesive. And there are ways that I have learned to sort of work around the clear cover. Sometimes um, you can put parchment paper, not wax paper, not saran wrap, not aluminum foil. Again, only parchment paper <laughs> will work for this. You can replace, like if you're gonna work on this section up top, say I peeled this back, I would apply a just a line of parchment paper that I could then cut into squares and work on one section at a time without exposing all of my adhesive to the elements at once. So sometimes people run strips of tape over the top and then cut along the tape lines to make squares. There are all kinds of ways to work around the inconvenience of the clear cover while still getting a self-leveling glue that has so many fewer issues than these double-sided adhesive canvases. Now, do I still have a lot of these in my stash? I do. Do I still enjoy doing them? I do. But if, like I said, if I had to choose, I would choose the um, port glue every time. The fourth thing that I really wish I had known when I started diamond painting is how important it is to invest in a comfortable, ergonomic setup right from the beginning. So you can see here that I have my diamond painting set up on a wooden tabletop easel. I just got this from Amazon. I'll link something really similar in the description below. This 
easel has saved me from so much neck pain. One of the things I hear from new diamond painters the very most is how much their neck hurts from working flat on the table, hanging their head down over their work for extended periods of time. And a lot of people have actually had to give up diamond painting because this becomes such a problem for them. I think it's really important when you first start to either invest in a drafting table or one of these adjustable easels so that you can frequently change the angle of your work and the position of your head and shoulders just to prevent those repetitive motion injuries. Now it's also really important, I think, to have a place to rest your arms so that you're not constantly holding your arms up in the air and straining that part of your upper back, especially if this is a new motion for you and you aren't like a professional bodybuilder who is used to doing a static hold in that position for a long time. So I really encourage you to invest in some tools. They're gonna save your neck and shoulders. Invest in a light pad to save your eyes from some eye strain. If you have an inkling that you're gonna be doing any more than one canvas, this really is vital. And remember, get up and take some breaks. Don't diamond paint for six hours at a time at one stretch and just expect that you'll have no issues. Exercise is really important. Do some resistance exercise for that upper back so that you're not just sitting all day. It's super important for your health and for your mental health and for your well-being. So my fourth tip, invest in a setup that's ergonomic for you so you don't injure yourself. The fifth thing that I wish I had known when I first started diamond painting was how important it is to deal with issues with your adhesive before you lay any drills on your canvas. Now, I mentioned a little bit earlier that double-sided adhesive canvases like the one I have here are much more prone to having the adhesive wrinkle up and not lay completely flat, either due to shipping or changes in the weather, um, because the canvas material has constricted or expanded, issues like that. So when you peel back a section of your double-sided adhesive canvas, when you pull back the release paper, turn off your light pad and make sure you look for any issues in your adhesive. Now, hopefully you'll be able to see a little bit here as I lift this up into the light. When I have my light pad on from behind this section, I can't see those rivers at all. When I turn it off and let just the daylight land on the surface of that canvas, that's when all things become apparent. So do you see those wrinkles in my adhesive? If I were to ignore those and lay my drills right over the top, what would happen is I would end up with a ridge of drills in my piece so that when the light hits that, those sparkling drills, when my piece is finished, it would look like I just have a line going across my work. Now this might be a straight line or it might be kind of a wiggly line, um, but it's really important to get an X-Acto knife or a craft knife out and just flatten this adhesive out before you set any drills. So hopefully you'll be able to see what I'm gonna do here. What I like to do is just slice along sort of the length of that wrinkle then I like to come in and do some little short slices. I'm gonna release all the air that's under that wrinkle. And I'm gonna work on that until I get this laying pretty flat. Now, I don't like to come in with my pen, with my drill pen, and, um, and run it over this because I find that I have extra wax on the tip of my pen sometimes and I don't wanna kill the, um, the stickiness on my adhesive. So what I do is just take the tip of my X-Acto knife, run it over the top of the canvas. If I can feel a little bump or ridge, then I know I need to keep working to get that to lay down flat. As soon as I can feel with the edge of my X-Acto knife that I'm not getting a little boop as I go across, a little bump, then I know I've dealt with that um, and I'm not gonna have any of those raised drills on my work. So make sure before you set drills on your canvases, on your double-sided adhesive canvases,
that you deal with those little wrinkles and rivers. Don't just ignore them. I have ignored them in the past, and now I have some pieces hanging up in my house that, like I said, look like they have little lines going across them, or they look like the drills are lifting off. Even though the drills are setting just fine, they're just raised a little bit in sort of a V pattern. So that's something that I wish I had known when I started. I'm actually gonna do a little diamond painting while I go through the sixth thing I wish I had known when I first started. Now, if you're interested in any of the canvases that I'm showing here today, I will either have put titles up on the screen for those or I'll link them in the description below so you don't have to worry about finding them or finding out more info about them. So the sixth thing I wish I had known when I first started is actually more of a personal preference than anything else. I wish I had known how important it is to me to set my drills fairly straight. Now, I've made a whole video about how to set square drill or square drills straight. I almost said square drill canvases straight. And of course, I'll link that in the cards up above. I think it's just as important, however, to set round drills straight. And like I said, this is more a preference for me than anything else. When I look at my canvases, especially the lightest colors on my canvases, if I haven't set my drills as straight as I possibly can, that doesn't mean perfect, that doesn't mean flawless, it just means if I haven't taken the pride in my work and set those drills as straight as I can, then I actually end up liking my whole piece a little bit less. I end up with more gapping. I end up just feeling like maybe I didn't give that piece my all. Now, if you're a person who loves to diamond paint things and get through them fast, and that's more important to you than setting drills straight, that is totally 100% okay. Like I said, this is a very personal thing I wish I had known for myself how important that was going to be and taken the time at the beginning to develop some more strategies on how I could do that better. The seventh thing that I wish I had known when I first started diamond painting is my soapbox of the century. And if you're a person who's tired of hearing about this, then I really encourage you to take some action on it. <laughs> yourself so that I can get off my soapbox because I just keep seeing this over and over and over again everywhere I look at diamond paintings. The seventh and last thing that I wish I had known when I first started diamond painting is how many images in the diamond painting world are illegally produced with copyright infringing images. Okay? Now, when I first started, I had absolutely no idea that was the case. I bought all kinds of paintings on AliExpress without checking to see who the artist actually was for those paintings. I assumed that because they were for sale, that it was legal for me to buy them and it was legal for the seller to sell them. That was absolutely not the case. So many canvases produced for Alibaba, AliExpress, then sold on sites all over like Amazon and a million other online stores are actually illegally produced. I probably get at least one request per week from a company asking me to review canvases that are illegally produced and contain unlicensed images. Now you guys know me, I just won't do it. 90% of the time, I actually report that company to the artist that they're infringing. And it's something that I'm pretty passionate about. A, because it wasn't clear to me at the beginning that that was going on, and I felt like I was, without intending to, being part of something that I would never knowingly do. And that really, really made me mad. <laughs> In fact, I've made this video before. I once had a video on my channel called Six Things I Wish I Had Known When I First Started Diamond Painting. In that video, I showed one of the canvases that I had ordered from AliExpress without realizing that that image was copyright infringing. 
I showed it in that video and that video was what earned me a copyright strike and started really my whole journey of being on my soapbox about copyright infringing diamond paintings. So another reason I'm so passionate about this is my daughter is an artist and I can't imagine how angry and upset I would be if I found out that one of her images had been stolen and was being sold without her being able to make a living from it. So I'm gonna put a list up on the edge of the screen of the only diamond paintings I know of that sell legally licensed images. I have checked out a lot of companies. There's no possible way for me to check out all of them, but these are the only ones I know about at this moment in April of 2020 that are selling legally licensed images, okay? I hope that you will think about the images you're buying, double check them with Google Images or TinEye.com before you purchase them to see who the artist is, to see if they're legally licensed. I'll give you one tip. It's usually pretty easy to tell because legally licensed um, diamond painting producers pretty much always put the artist's name in their listing. If you're purchasing from a site um, and there are no artist names lift, listed anywhere, you can be pretty sure that those are not licensed images. So I hope you enjoyed this video today. These were seven things that I wish I had known when I first started diamond painting. If you are an experienced diamond painter, like I said, please pop one thing at least in the comments below that you wish you had known. If you're a brand new diamond painter and you have other questions, I'm always happy to answer them if I possibly can. So drop me a line down in the comments. Have a wonderful week, all of you. Spread some joy wherever you are today, and I'll catch you next time. Bye.